Welcome. In our eighth episode, we dive deep into Chapter 7, Overcoming Obstacles, where we explored the mental and emotional barriers that often stand in our way to financial success. We learned about the importance of overcoming fear, cynicism, laziness, bad habits, and arrogance. These obstacles, while challenging, are not insurmountable. Remember, it's not just about what you face, but how you face it. Now, Let's turn a new page and embark on an even more exciting journey with Chapter 8, Getting Started. There is gold everywhere. Most people are not trained to see it. Imagine a world where opportunities for wealth are all around, yet remain unseen. That's the reality most of us live in. The journey to wealth, as we learn, isn't necessarily easy. It's like learning to ride a bike. Initially, there's some wobbling, but with determination, success, becomes inevitable. The key lies in awakening what the author calls our financial genius. This inner genius is often dormant, lulled to sleep by societal beliefs that undermine the value of financial intelligence. The book challenges this, urging us to shift our mindset from working for money to having money work for us. To ignite this transformation, the author presents 10 steps. Let's zoom into a few. Step one is about finding a reason greater than reality. It's the deep emotional reasons, the combination of wants and don't wants, that fuel our journey towards financial freedom. What drives you? Is it the freedom to travel, control over your time, or the legacy you want to leave behind? Each step is a building block in developing your financial acumen. The process is about honing your ability to see and seize opportunities, much like a seasoned gold miner who can spot potential where others see nothing. The power of choice. The chapter kicks off with a bold statement. If you do not have a strong reason, there is no sense in reading further. It's all about the power of choice. Every dollar in our hands is a chance to shape our future. Do we choose to be rich, poor, or middle class? Our spending habits aren't just habits. They're reflections of who we are. Different characters making different choices with their money. The author shares a childhood memory of playing Monopoly, a game that taught him the difference between an asset and a liability. It's this early understanding that set him on the path to wealth. The lesson? We must choose to learn and understand financial concepts to succeed. Investing in Education Next, we delve into the true asset we all possess, our mind. Investing in education is crucial. The author emphasizes that learning about investing is more important than immediately buying investments. Remember, the richest people are often the best learners. He shares a personal story. After attending a seminar, he gained knowledge that led him to make millions. This underlines the idea that investing in your education can have exponential returns. The Power of Association Moving on, the chapter discusses the power of association. The author doesn't choose friends based on their wealth, but on what he can learn from them. He points out that people with money often talk about it, not to brag, but because they're genuinely interested in it. These conversations are learning opportunities. A cautionary note is sounded. Beware of the chicken littles of life, those who always see the sky is falling. The lesson? Surround yourself with people who inspire you, challenge you, and share their knowledge, not their fears. Mastering a formula and then learning a new one. Imagine a baker making bread with a tried and tested recipe. Similarly, to make money, there's a need for a formula, a recipe for success. The author challenges the traditional formula of working for money and urges us to find our unique recipe. He shares his own journey, starting with learning about real estate foreclosures and gradually expanding his expertise. The key? Learning quickly and adapting to new formulas. This approach isn't just about acquiring wealth. It's about evolving with the changing world. It's not solely what you know, but how swiftly you can learn and apply new knowledge. In a fast-paced world, the ability to adapt and learn new skills is invaluable. Paying yourself first, the power of self-discipline. 
Next, we delve into the principle of paying yourself first. It's a simple yet profound concept. Before settling bills and expenses, invest in your future. This step is more than just financial action. It's a testament to self-discipline. The lack of this discipline is often why many struggle financially, despite earning well. The author emphasizes that self-discipline is the key differentiator between the rich and the poor. It's not about how much you earn, but how you manage and grow your wealth. Mastering self-discipline in managing cash flow, people, and personal time is crucial, regardless of your profession. Master a formula and then learn a new one. Success in finance, much like in baking, requires following and mastering a specific formula or recipe. The traditional formula most people learn is to work for money. However, to achieve financial, to learn and master different methods of making money. The author emphasizes the importance of continually learning and adapting to new financial strategies, moving beyond the conventional approach of just earning and spending. Pay Yourself First The Power of Self-Discipline The concept of paying yourself first is central to financial success. It involves prioritizing your savings and investments over immediate expenses. This approach requires a high level of self-discipline, particularly when facing financial pressures or temptations. It's about defending and growing your asset column despite external pressures. This strategy may go against traditional financial advice, but is crucial for building long-term wealth. The key is avoiding unnecessary debt and consumer expenses, focusing instead on building assets. Don't get into large debt positions. Maintain low expenses and focus on building assets before making significant purchases like a house or car. Avoid consumer debt and make financial decisions that keep you out of the rat race. Use financial pressure. Creatively. When facing financial shortfalls, resist the urge to dip into savings or investments. Instead, use this pressure as motivation to find innovative ways to increase income, thereby boosting both your financial capacity and intelligence. Pay your brokers. Well, investing in quality advice from professionals like brokers, attorneys, and accountants can be highly beneficial. These experts should provide valuable information and education, helping you make informed decisions that lead to financial growth. A good broker can be an invaluable asset, providing insights and opportunities that you might otherwise miss. In the realm of sophisticated investing, the paramount question is not just about the potential returns, but more crucially, about the speed of recouping the initial investment. This principle applies across various investment vehicles, including stocks. A strategy often employed involves injecting capital into a promising stock, awaiting a value increase, often due to company-specific catalysts like new product announcements, and then extracting the original investment amount while leaving the profits to fluctuate. This approach not only secures the initial investment but also keeps it liquid and ready for other opportunities, effectively making the remaining asset free. The author acknowledges the inherent risks in such investments, emphasizing the importance of only investing money that one can afford to lose. His personal strategy involves a diversified approach to investments, accepting that while some will yield high returns, home runs, others may not perform as well or might even result in losses. The key is to limit exposure to the amount invested at any given time. This contrasts with the more traditional and conservative approach of putting money in savings, which is deemed safer but typically offers limited growth and lacks the potential for free assets. The concept of free assets is pivotal in the author's investment philosophy. Every investment must offer something extra, a bonus or an upside, such as a piece of real estate or stock shares. This approach is akin to Ray Kroc's strategy with McDonald's, where the real estate value under the franchises was as important as the franchise itself. Wise investors look beyond simple return on investment, ROI. They seek assets that offer additional value once the initial investment is recouped, a hallmark of financial intelligence. 
Chapter 8 Delves into the art of using assets to acquire luxuries, illustrated through a story about a teenager's desire for a car. Rather than simply fulfilling this desire, the boy's father uses this opportunity to teach him about investing. He provides his son with seed money, not for direct purchase, but to invest in stocks. The condition is that the son can only buy the car once he has doubled the investment, with the initial sum then going into his college fund. This approach not only teaches the son about the stock market, but also instills valuable lessons about money management and the power of investment. This story underpins a broader theme about the necessity of self-discipline and the correct usage of money. The author argues that without strong mental fortitude, money is often misdirected into wasteful expenses, leading to financial struggles. He presents a hypothetical scenario where 100 people are given $10,000 each. By the year's end, the majority would have nothing left or even incur more debt. A few would grow their money modestly, and only a handful would significantly increase their wealth. This disparity underscores the importance of not just earning money, but more importantly, knowing how to make it work effectively. The author emphasizes that while he enjoys luxuries, he does not purchase them on credit. Instead, he uses his desire for luxury to motivate his investment strategies, focusing on growing his asset column before indulging in expensive purchases. This approach contrasts with the common habit of accruing debt for immediate gratification, a practice that leads to financial difficulties in the long run. In summary, the author advocates for a shift in mindset from working for money to having money work for you. This involves learning to make smart investment choices, where the emphasis is on quickly recovering the initial investment and gaining additional assets at little to no cost. The author stresses the importance of financial education and discipline, illustrating how these skills are crucial in directing money effectively to generate more wealth. He encourages readers to adopt a perspective where investments are made not just for returns, but also for acquiring additional assets. Being Heroes, The Power of Myth The author reminisces about his childhood heroes, baseball legends like Willie Mays, Hank Aaron, and Yogi Berra. These figures weren't just sports stars, they were the embodiment of skills, attitudes, and successes that he aspired to. This emulation wasn't mere hero worship, but a powerful learning tool allowing him to imbibe and replicate the qualities of these icons in his own life. As he grew older, his heroes evolved from sports stars to financial giants like Donald Trump, Warren Buffett, Peter Lynch, George Soros, and Jim Rogers. The admiration was not just for their financial success, but for their specific skills and strategies in the financial world. Understanding their investment styles, decision-making processes, and business acumen provided invaluable lessons. Emulating these financial heroes goes beyond mere inspiration. It serves as a practical learning mechanism. For example, when analyzing market trends, the author would adopt a perspective similar to that of Warren Buffett. This approach to learning and adaptation is not just about acquiring knowledge. It's about cultivating a mindset and a set of behaviors conducive to financial success. By choosing the right heroes, one can tap into a reservoir of raw genius and learn to navigate the financial world with greater acumen and confidence. Teach and you shall receive the power of giving. The concept of giving as a means to receive is deeply ingrained in the author's philosophy, taught by his rich dad. Contrasting with his educated dad, who was generous with knowledge but hesitant with money, his rich dad emphasized the importance of being charitable both in terms of knowledge and financial resources. This principle is grounded in the belief that to receive something, one must first be willing to give it. This idea transcends mere financial transactions. It's about cultivating a mindset of abundance and reciprocity. The author shares personal experiences and observations to illustrate this principle. For instance, when he feels a lack of something, be it money, happiness, or contacts, he starts by giving it. This approach often leads to receiving more of what he gave in a multiplied form. 
This isn't just about monetary gain, but about nurturing a cycle of generosity and abundance. The idea is echoed in the notion that God does not need to receive, but humans need to give. It suggests that the act of giving fulfills a fundamental human need and sets in motion a cycle of reciprocal generosity. Rich Dad's assertion that poor people are more greedy than rich people is a provocative statement that challenges conventional notions of wealth and generosity. The rich, as per this view, provide value, which is why they gain wealth. The notion is that when one feels needy, the solution isn't to hoard or cling to what one has, but to give generously, thereby opening the doors to abundance. In essence, the author promotes the idea of teaching as a form of giving and receiving. He argues that by sharing knowledge, especially about money and investing, one not only helps others, but also enhances their own understanding. This reciprocal process of teaching and learning enriches both the giver and the receiver. It's a principle that the author has witnessed and practiced in his own life, seeing it as a catalyst for personal and financial growth. Don't forget to hit the like button, share and subscribe.